Hello dealmakers, in this video we're going to talk about GameStop. So if you haven't heard, this week GameStop has been the biggest news in the stock market because GameStop stock, the stock of GameStop actually went to the moon, literally to the moon. So if you see here, sometime around on November of last year, game stop was at uh, just around eleven dollars per share right ten eleven dollars per share and then last january 28th that was yesterday if i'm not mistaken right yesterday it went as high as 483 dollars per share 10 to 483 i think that's more than four thousand 800 percent that's why gamestop has been the news maker of the week on wall street and we're going to discuss should you buy gamestop i wasn't supposed to do this video but uh, one of you guys uh, jd asked me what's my point of view regarding gme and wall street bets well i thought that deserves its own video and that's why i am here as always I always do a business model analysis and GameStop is it's a very simple business because they are a video game retailer transitioning to e-commerce. When I saw their 10K, you know, their financial statements, uh, I saw that this was a company that was losing money. And they were actually a Fortune 500 company. Uh, I think they were a division of Barnes & Noble and they were spun off and as a separate company, they were able to expand all over the world. No, they were a huge company at one point. They were the biggest video game retailer in the entire world. Unfortunately, technology happened and you know, e-commerce happened. Streaming of games happened. Uh, there was no longer any need to buy CDs or, you know, tapes or uh, cartridges, you know, that disappeared you can now just download your games over the internet so there was no need for a video game retailer and even the e-commerce aspect of it i'm not quite sure e-commerce is the way to distribute games there are a lot of gaming companies that we will be talking about i'll be studying a couple of them because one of the companies that i'm invested in you know c group or c limited actually has a gaming division garena and Garena, you know, the trend now is you know, through mobile gaming. If you just you, know, you just sign up for the game's app, uh, download the app on your phone, that's it. There's no need to go to an e-commerce store. There's I already stopped checking you know, what GameStop wants to do. Uh, there was, uh, I guess there was a section on their website where they want to get involved in esports. Now, probably that's something that uh, that can work, that that is worth looking at deeper. What I can tell you is the company is doing something good. Maybe they're doing something right because they've been able to stem the losses. So in 2019, they were losing 83 million in one quarter. But by October 31, 2020, there was, they were able to bring it down to 18.8. Year 2019. Uh, nine months into the year, they lost close to half a million dollars. They were able to bring it down to just three hundred million dollars. This was in this was last year, so they have their work cut out ahead of them. I don't know what the game plan is um, right now. I'm not too interested in knowing more about the company. But what is the lesson here? Now, there actually is a big lesson here, and I'll get to that in a moment. But let's go through the story, what happened, in case you don't know what happened. Well, in a nutshell, there were a couple of hedge funds that shorted GameStop. Uh, they felt that the business was, well, it, the business truly is a dinosaur. It was going the way of these other extinct businesses like Blockbuster. So I guess these hedge funds were just doing their civic duty. They want to put this company out of its misery. But one guy, Keith Gill, who goes by the name of Deep Effing Value in Reddit, 
Um, and he also runs a YouTube channel called Roaring Kitty. So you can check out Roaring Kitty. I'll link to the description below. You can see you know, his investment thesis. So uh, he said that GME or GameStop was a candidate for a short squeeze. So a short squeeze happens when you know, short sellers, they profit from a stock when the stock's price goes down. So if a short seller shorts a stock, they want the price to go down. But what happens is, what if they encounter a surge of buyers, a surge of bullish buyers who buy up the stock, they drive up the price, and because they're driving up the price, the short sellers now could be forced to cover their shorts. And to do that, they have to buy back the shares at a higher price, eating their losses. So, so what happens is, bullish buyers buy the stock, they drive the price up, short sellers get squeezed, they cover the shorts, driving the price further up, which attracts more bullish buyers or maybe attracts the current buyers to add more positions, to drive the stock higher, driving more of the short sellers to cover their shorts. And it's like an infinite loop for making money, for printing money. That's why GameStop reached to the moon. That's why it made $4,000 because of this phenomenon called a short squeeze. Keith did not do this alone, right? He had the backing of 2.5 million members in Wall Street Bets. So around Tuesday when this broke out, became a member of Wall Street Bets. And at that time, there were only 2.5 million members. Now they have 4.4 million members already. Right, so they're doing battle against these hedge funds, Melvin Capital, Citron Research, D1 Capital Partners, Candlelight. So all of these hedge funds. What's interesting here is uh, the head of Citron Research, Andrew Left, apparently is a hated short seller in Wall Street bets. So these guys found an enemy to rally around. So they, they found a common enemy that they could fight against. So if you get, go into Wall Street bets, you will actually find all of these memes. Uh, why don't we go in there? So we're here at Wall Street bets. Let's uh, scroll and see what are the what are the memes? Because the the funny thing here are the memes here. <laughs> so I that what you, did you do during the coronavirus pandemic? I saved GameStop by crashing the entire stock market. Right. All right, so they've been able to discount. So now Citron has uh, retired from short selling. So here, so now they're actually they're making all of these memes, making it look like this is a battle between good and evil. And so, you know, you as a community, Wall Street Bets community, found a common enemy, found a reason to band together. So it's not just, so having a high conviction, it's not just about having a high conviction stock anymore and you know, having found a company that had strong fundamentals, this was now a battle versus good and evil, battle between small retail investors and the big bad hedge funds. And I'm not siding with the hedge funds, but that is the scenario right now. And it's not just Wall Street bets alone. Right? So they, they now got the support of some big guns. Elon Musk tweeted, get shorty. Right? Elon Musk is famous for hating these short sellers. David or Dave Portnoy of Barstool, uh, he also lashed out against the Robinhood CEO because Robinhood was forced to restrict, you know, put restrictions on trading uh, GameStop and other stocks like that. And then there's Chamat, uh, Chamat Palihapatiya, who is a very famous venture capitalist. So he also joined the fray. And we have uh, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who was also infuriated with Robin Hood because of what they did, you know, restricting access. So I guess that's why it ballooned 4 million members because they were able to attract the attention of all of these influencers. 
they were able to attract the attention of the media and it fueled you know, it fueled this run uh, in the stock and not just GameStop there are other stocks as well such as AMC Beth, Bed Bath & Beyond I don't know if it's the same situation with Space with Virgin Galactic and with American Airlines but these stocks were uh, highly shorted They're, they had a lot of uh, shorts, pending shorts, or what's called short float. So they become target. They they became targets of Wall Street bets and other forums. You know, other uh, online communities that that wanted to get a slice of the pie. All right. So the question is: At this point in time, should you buy GameStop? My personal take. And remember that I am not a licensed investment advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just my opinion because I was asked by you know, one of you guys to, to share my opinion. You only live once. So this is, this is a YOLO trade. This is a crazy trade that is not based on anything except you know, the hope that you, you are part of a community that will work together to bring down hedge funds so i'm not saying that's a bad strategy but what i'm saying is you need if you're going to get into this just try it out with a portion of your funds just a small portion because you should not be investing your life savings into something like this that is not supported by fundamentals not even supported by technicals no, it's really just actually it's called social arbitrage now you're looking there is a very le legitimate strategy called social arbitrage this term I, I first heard of this term from dumb money where you look for trends you know you look for social signals um, these don't show up in the balance sheets yet but you're looking for say you're looking for situations where companies are making a killing there's a product out there that is say getting sold out getting a lot of demand but wall street hasn't seen it yet main street hasn't seen it yet and you act on that social signal kind of what like keith gill did he had this idea that gamestop will be able to turn itself around so for him it was a value play and then he just used social media to share his investment thesis he shared it on his youtube channel he shared it on reddit and there were a couple of converts there were a couple of people that bought in you know, invested with him and you know, he continued to hype up the stock and i guess the rest is history eventually he was able to convince you know, along with probably a few other people you know, with with the early pioneers they were able to convince people to get behind you know, this investment thesis. It probably blew way out of proportion, but that's what social arbitrage is. You're finding certain signals before, you know, you're looking for signals of a potential investment, a huge potential investment that Wall Street hasn't seen yet and Main Street hasn't seen it yet. You need to be first mover, is what I'm saying. So that's why at this point I'm really not recommending that you buy into GameStop. Maybe if you want if maybe if you have gambling money, then go ahead. But I don't recommend that you do it now. What I would recommend is that you study social arbitrage and definitely I will be doing that. I'll be looking I'm a member of Wall Street Bets already, but I don't believe that well, but I don't think I'll be doing this in the near future. I do have some a few other things to do first before i get to social arbitrage so this is the one thing that i learned from this uh, from this event because if it happened now mark cuban said it's going to happen again in the future so chris camilo also of dumb money also said that if they were able to do this now they'll be able to do this in the future so my hope is that in the future i'll be there uh, well, I'll be one of the first in the crowd so that I can benefit you know, when, when, that, when that trade goes to the moon. But for now, I'm sitting on the sidelines. 
I'm re recommending that you do do too. But if you decide to get in, just get in with a small portion of your money, something that you can really afford to lose, not your retirement money or that money that you're supposed to leave as a legacy to your family. And with that, uh, I do hope you look, I do hope you still stay around because in the next videos, um, I'm going to be doing what I was supposed to be doing. And you know, I'm working on Tesla, Tesla stock analysis, GM stock analysis, and McDonald's. I'm looking at a wide spectrum of companies right now because I want to get a better feel for the market. I do have some ideas already of the direction that it's taking, but personally, I don't want to be concentrated you know, in just one area. Uh, so if you want to, oh, so if you want to hear about these stock analysis videos in the future, please make sure to first smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and that helps the channel grow and make sure to subscribe so that you'll be notified. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the not notification bell button so that you'll be notified whenever these future stock analysis videos become available. Well, I hope you learned something from this short squeeze video. Uh, I definitely learned something from this event. Um, I'll be looking forward to doing social arbitrage with you in the future. Until then, please continue to make deals. And I hope that all of your deals will push through.